that is kind of part of the reputation of people from Boston, Cambridge, et cetera, that there's a lot of racism there. You grow up around a lot of that and at some point have to like, you know, unlearn that or, or realize nah. that you grew up with some fucked up ideas nah, being presented so to you. Nah, so I'm from Cambridge. Right. That's like the most liberal city right. on the planet. It's true. So like when I'm five going on play dates with my friends, like my mother never said, oh yeah, by the way, these are some black kids you're about to go see. I didn't know. I really didn't get the, the whole race thing until later on when other kids from like other schools, like if we had to, like I probably did some sort of basketball leagues and people, you talk like you black, like shit like that. Like right. I didn't really get that, but yeah, I never, I, ne I never came up with that, but yeah, like um, there was a racist part of Cambridge. Right. There was a, there was definitely a racist part of Cambridge, East Cambridge. Right. They 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 um they was they was on that racist shit. Like sometimes they would like um, dudes would drive by like and people are gonna be mad, but suck my dick. People would drive by um and and uh and be like N word lover, shit like that. Like they would see me in the right. park. Yeah, I get the N word lover, shit like that. How'd you feel and, about and, that? And we You're would like, clash with them. Yeah. I didn't know. I'm like, bro, I'm just here. In my, it's the same way I feel when people diss me on the internet and go, you want to be back? I'm just here with. The motherfuckers I grew up with, bro. What do you want me to do, man? Right. Yeah, I can't help what I'm into. I can't help what I'm into. You can't help. Yo, isn't there some shit like, like, like if you raise a baby with wolves, it's going to think it's a dog? Mm. Some shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. You used to say N-word? Mm-mm. Never? Never. You know why? I ain't going to lie. I'm like, probably like, in like, like fifth grade, probably like. I was with my man ES and I, I tried to fake experiment with it over a song, like the song lyrics was playing. Mm. And he just checked me, like, even though I'm just rapping my favorite lyrics and shit, he was like, yo, don't be saying that shit. Mm. That's my man. Like, we got, and I'm like, <laughs> That's good. And I'm like the, the fact that he checked me and he's the most laid back person in the world. And so I learned to even edit it out of songs that I like. Right. You know what I mean? Because there's a lot of white kids who grow up around a bunch of dudes. No, I know hood white kids, though, and, that and they, they say that and they let that they, shit yeah. fly. And, and they and, think and, it's and, totally fine, but then they start to get some degree of notoriety. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, the rest of the yeah. world doesn't care about these five black dudes who are cool with me saying it. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. But that's what I, I realized from that. I said, damn, if my bro will check me on that, that means I'm going to have confrontations. And I was already having confrontations because I didn't look tough. Tough. Mm. Like I just like like you know there's some white boys that look tough like Russians and shit like that. I just didn't have the tough look like a blonde hair, blue eyes. People was already setting up, setting it on me for no reason. I had to fight a lot, mm. and I'm like, I right, I'm not gonna make the I'm not gonna make it more fights for myself because I wanna uh because I'm trying to say this word. So I, I deaded that at like 10 years old, and I decided I'm not even saying that shit in the capacity of of rap lyrics. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, I would feel uncomfortable even saying it by myself in the car, so definitely nah, saying it around, like, other humans would probably be really weird. Yeah, not nah, facts. Definitely. Yeah, it's crazy how much, like, like you in the old interview shit I've seen you, you definitely, like, just gave off way less of, like, a tough, confident vibe. But it's 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 so interesting to see how somebody could, just through having more and more life experience, just sort of, like, gain more of that demeanor of, like, confidence right. that you sort of project now. That's good. Um, fuck. Also, yeah, did you lose? Can I smoke the cigarette? Of course. You got another one? Somebody got a lighter. You got another one? Lighter. What is that, Newport? Yeah. Looks like you had it behind your ear for a while. Top lit ass. You got another one? This is it. Yo. You he, came here he with got, a single Newport? He got, no, we got him in, <laughs> we got him in the car. <laughs> All right. That's cool. We, we get you one. I'll get one out there. Somebody get Adam a Newport. <laughs> what are we doing here? You had one song where... You, uh, I just hear, heard you say something about like I dedicated my whole fucking life to this and I still ain't made it. And Are I you just like listening to my shit. Yeah. What do you think I'm doing here? I appreciate you, bro. No, no doubt. I just thought you was gonna be like a little like just uh, look for take, some beef. Taking the interview. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I, I do as much digging as I can. That's the fire. Ske schedule can be tight sometimes. Damn, I, but I forget what song that was, but yeah. It was like you walking up the stairs as you said that. But I was just really thinking about that, and I'm like, there must have been so many moments of like pure frustration that you have to get past when yeah. you feel like I've just given so much of myself and like you know you're, you're in so much more of a better place now than you were 
five years ago, four years ago, three years ago, but you still have to fight against that you feeling. You got to fight every day, bro. And I, and I got to fight rejection, bro. I still face that shit. Like, I faced a lot of rejection just in my life in general. Mm. A lot of rejection. I feel like I went through more rejection than the average human goes through in their whole lifetime in like a year of my life. Easy. Really? Easy, easy. Because I put myself out there. Mm. So, yeah, you can just fight through that shit. You just have to get used to it. That's a big part of it. You have to get used to 100 people saying no just for one for person one, to yes, say yes. Yeah, facts. Yeah, 100%. But uh, what, what do you like? Have, have there been moments that were like really hard for you to just keep going in, in terms of chasing this path? Like, was there ever moments so, where you're like, fuck it, I'm going to work at the mall. I can't do it. Like, or I'm going to go back to the streets nah, and just gonna totally trap. forget about this. I was going to trap because honestly, like, even when I, my mother made me get jobs. And when I got jobs, like, I had to, like, quit one because I got shot at. And they found out about it. It was a city job that I had got through, like, a job program. You got shot at while on the job? Nah, it was oh, at my okay. house. But they, they was, got fired because of that? They, they, it was through, like, the city. So they was like, yeah, you got shit going on. Like, oh, wow. So I didn't return to work after that. And then I had another job, and dudes ran down on me. Like it was, it was in a, it was in like an opposition neighborhood. Like I would go, I would, I would work jobs just to make my mom happy, and I would put my life at risk. Like I'd have to go to work with the pistol on me just so I could be like, "Look, mom, I'm working." Right. So like, when you build up a certain level of baggage in the streets, you can't go to work no more. Mm. That's the fucked up shit with like the young kids running around drilling. Like if you ever want to square up, it's hard because dudes don't want to let a lot of shit go. Mm. You know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, I, I never, I never thought about like quitting and like working at the mall. But I definitely Might I, quit, I, quit and get a break. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was, I was confused at, at one point in um 2011. I had a release party for um for my album, and uh, my man Rock Ducati was there, and that was like another one of my big homies. And he had kind of, I had met him like a couple years prior, but he just believed in with me with music. So he just, he really put a battery in my back, like musically and shit. And Rock was at my party and like, we had like one of the greatest nights ever. And as I walked, um, we walked outside from the club and uh, it was like, you know, a lot of shots went off and shit and he passed that night. So like, that was like an extreme high from music where it's like, I'm doing this positive shit and then walking out the club all of that ended, you know what I mean? And it was like one of my lowest lows type shit. So wow. that kind of made me like, I don't know exactly what, I always associated music with something positive, but this was the first time that I had doubt because I'm like, damn, how could something so positive essentially bring something so negative? So I would say, I don't know if I, if I felt like quitting. Around that time, I tried to start experimenting with more like, different types of music and shit not mm -hmm. like i mean rap shit you know what i mean but i was like let me just try to make this mainstream white boy music so i could get rich and get my homies out of the hood and like that's that's where my mind was like i was just kind of thrown on shit but then you know what i mean I, I shook back but yeah i would say that was probably one of the rougher times and then yeah i don't know i've had moments where i'd be like fuck this shit mm. But I get frustrated because at certain points it's like I'm just putting money into this shit and not really getting that much back. Yeah, from it. yeah, yeah. And and it's crazy when you know you're better than dudes. Like I know I'm making better songs than dudes. And I know, and I always had a core fan base. I always had people who told me, yo, your music makes me uh made me not commit suicide. Like I always had that shit. Your music mm. helped me through the toughest time in my life. I always had that shit. Always. Super core fan base. So I knew like the caliber of my music, but it's just frustrating. Like, damn, I can't crack. Like they don't, people, the industry don't even believe in this shit because they've never seen it. And it's a cookie cutter industry. They don't know how to work this shit. That's what I would get told. Like they, they don't know how to work me. Mm. You know what I mean? So I work my fucking self and I'm independent. 